Gonna be joined by MRP Dota for the second game. Infamous are taking their sweet ass time, dude. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, DC didn't seem to want to take any time to jump back into this game too. Uh, hopefully they didn't read Twitch chat too much in between the game. Um, but they will have first pick for this one. Um, and they're going to go for the highly esteemed Legion that a lot of teams have been running since Kiev and even slightly before then. Um, Infamous, they are going to go back for their Troll Warlord. You mentioned kind of the commonality that you pair it up with a, a, a Magnus or get it a Midas early on and they will end up doing that here. So I'm going to reveal two of their cores, but definitely something that they seem comfortable with. Uh, from game one, Troll Warlord, though, he is a bit susceptible to killing himself to Blade Mail. Uh, so Legion already a decent solution uh, for that. But either way, Digital Chaos is staring down the barrel of defeat uh, here uh, against Infamous. And this is a double limb bracket, so they're not entirely out of the game or out of the uh, qualifiers here for Summit America. But they do drop down to face is GG. And his GG, I mean, despite losing earlier today, they played pretty darn well. Mm -hmm. Felt like a couple of draft limitations for them against Thunderbirds. Um, and, and it felt like they out-executed Thunderbirds in a lot of the engagements. So it's not an, by any means uh, a slouch down there in the lower bracket. I like the start for DC if they're going to bring this back, push it to a game three. I mean, Crystal Maiden first is whatever, versatile. She, she really does it all. And uh, you know, Doob is definitely comfortable on this hero, but you know, big difference here for what I imagine to be 4 Ev's hero. He uh, played <clears throat> Nature's Prophet, now going to play probably the Legion Commander. And the difference there is that Legion Commander can be really, really assertive, both in lane and in the mid game, looking for those ganks. Whereas Nature's Prophet kind of has to piggyback on his allies in order to do that. Like, you can make some, te <clears throat> some teleportation plays, get Courier's Snipes. But again, you're not really going to do it out of the blue by yourself. You really need your teammates to set that up. So this lets Forev kind of be his own man, at least a little bit more. Yes, you may uh, end up losing the duels up against Troll Warlord and Magnus. That's a lot of damage. But uh, you know what? It'll allow Forev to uh, play a lot more actively. Because in the last game, Nature's Prophet was fed on quite a bit. And wasn't really able to do all that much split pushing because of the fact that he was just you know crushed in the draft. Not really easy to do the same versus a Legion Commander. Yeah. We saw a lot of core plus ones uh, kill off of Abed's DP. Um, so much like Forev, Abed uh, didn't have the tankiest of heroes, didn't have an elusive hero. Uh, we'll see if they change kind of that approach a little bit. I misspoke in the last engagement. Sorry, it was the Ember and Spirit Breaker to kill off the DP, not the Bat, Rider and Spirit Breaker. But either way, throughout the game kind of seemed to be the theme is that Abed was melting. So we'll see if they give him something with a little more of a high skill cap than the DP. Uh, he's definitely a, a player with the propensity to use it, certainly very mechanically skilled. So we'll see if DC switch that up, but already kind of rectifying the issue that they had with Forev. You know, not only is he kind of just a stagnant hero against Spirit Breaker, Ember Spirit, and Bat Rider, but they also didn't really have anyone to combo him up with across the map other than Bulba's Monkey King. And in the in the phase of the game where the Monkey King is most effective, Forev was just getting ganked by Spirit Breaker repeatedly and dying. So very hard for them to kind of channel up that combination. So for now, the Ember Spirit ban is going to come out. I was going to take that away from Gucci in the mid lane. Even though Abed 1v1 defeated him kind of mid lane in the CS war, um, he still, you know, had just such a slate for such a great matchup that had a good time in game one. Similarly to the first match, uh, Infamous is going to completely target Ben Abedo and hope he gets a, a, a hero that he can't make uh, those flashy plays on like he did in game one. So TA, Meepo, Invoker all removed from the pool. It's all pretty much Abed's bread and butter right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he did pretty well in the Death Prophet, he said, in the early stages. Ended up just thrashing Gucci in lane. And to that end, I kind of want to see Gucci, or uh, I guess Benyaz, get Gucci a hero that is kind of foolproof. Like, pick up a Lina-type hero, or a Puck, or you know, one of these heroes that uh, has mediocre, at worst, lanes pretty much across the board. Uh, picking up an Ember Spirit is, uh, I mean, it's obviously banned out in this game, but Ember Spirit is just a hero that tends to have some some pretty sour matchups. And we saw exactly what happened in that situation in the last game. If Gucci was able to get a little bit of a, of a better start in this one, then Silencer. Infamous can definitely snowball out of control. Silencer, the pick. I mean, you're looking at mid lane matchups. This is, again, the hero that is going to run to some pretty bad mid lane matchups, but can just as easily be played as a support. And with yeah. together with Magnus, has some pretty sick team fight for Infamous. Yeah, he's a good Midas carrier as well. Seems like both these teams with a little bit of an inclination towards Midas. Um, 
more than likely, I would say, in the four position. I rarely see th- teams pick their f- three cores in the first three slots. Uh, so I, I would guess uh, that that's the case. And um, decent synergy with the RP in the battle trance. You just silence, give your, your team enough to kill off at least one significant hero in that combination just covers the Midas's uh Magnus's initiation as well not a big fan of the hero overall as a four position support though it really feels like at times he gets starved for levels and that's where Midas comes in as the kind of pseudo solution to that but um it looks like in this game they may actually end up uh, putting him uh putting the him in the five as the ogre generally speaking at least in the very very early stages needs just a little bit of extra gold you know in order for to get boots and an orb of venom or windlace orb of venom and uh, make some uh, cause some havoc in the early game dc they're gonna pick up abed's lena so kind of the last one of the last uh, heroes that he's super comfortable on uh and definitely one that he can dominate the lane with this is like pure horde versus alliance right now Right? Eh? Okay. Eh? All right. We got a couple. Couple. Or oh, a couple. couple. Right. Okay, eh. fine. Well, Ogre Magi, either way, the pickup for the infamous monkey? side. It's like a mercenary, right? I don't know. Man. I don't know. I don't, read, I don't read Monkey King's lore. Who cares about this guy? <laughs> uh, but Ogre Magi, either way, the pick. And uh, you know, just as a hero in a vacuum, something that uh, they will just take to the roam and try to play as... Uh, kind of a soft counter to the enemy monkey king infamous don't have the a bat rider or similar vision hero to deal with that monkey king they do have a magnus for the uh tree clearing which is something but uh, expects the monkey king to have a little bit of a better time in this game but uh, the big deal with this ogre magi is the fact that bloodlust plus some power plus troll warlord is disgusting so they will be uh riding this troll warlord train pretty hard and even going in for a bounty hunter so yeah it is first three cores in the first three phases silencer versus lena is a, a little bit of an interesting matchup for the silencer he at least has a little bit more game than uh, ember spirit versus a death prophet but not really by much mm -hmm. so they go back Bobo will be back on the monkey king and hit some good boundless strikes in the last game but overall in the team fights didn't feel all that influential um he's now got some decent uh contributors to gank with him with the legion commander he can go to her lane she's pretty dangerous early on gets the extra bonus move speed from uh, the overwhelming odds can chase people down. He's got the haunt from Mason. Generally, Lena, considered mobile, um, will either build into Yules or bots and has the fiery soul to just keep her moving around the map. Uh, so I, I could see Bulba having a, a better showing in this one. But yeah, on the other side of the coin, as you mentioned, going to be all on the back of Benjaz. And he certainly performed game one, but it didn't feel like he had that difficult of a time either uh, on the Troll Warlord. So it remains to be seen. We'll see how Gucci fares in the mid lane. Um, so harassing is one of the the greatest strengths of the silencer mid lane uh, with the with the glaze of wisdom. But Lena has such long attack range that it feels like you know Abed's going to be able to position himself such that he won't really get orb attacked down mm -hmm. uh, by the silencer. And then again, they could throw YYF in the lane or throw Baboka Junior in the lane to uh, slow up Abed. So we'll see how he survives in the mid lane. But uh, but it does feel like with the Monkey King they have. More than enough to answer this. So I like where DC is going. In general, Spectre versus Blink Initiator is always going to be nice to have. And also when you're trying to orb harass someone, your movement is usually really easy to read. Like when you're throwing out that glaive, you're not moving. So that means the LSA and the counterplay from a CM or a Monkey King just becomes that much easier. So in the vacuum, that matchup still a little bit tough for that silencer. But uh, again, you got to look towards those heroes that rotate. CM and Monkey King, definitely a deadly duo. Ogre Magi and Bounty Hunter, not a not a very frequent duo, but uh, definitely a potent one as well if they find their opportunities. This last pick, Spectre, from the DC side, is going to pretty much lock up the late game. Even though yeah, you are going to be going up against a Troll Warlord who's going to be mega farmed, you don't expect anyone else to really be quite as farmed as the Troll Warlord. So you can deal with everyone else and then kind of leave the Troll for last. That being said... This Spectre is going to be uh, taking a little bit of time to get going. And Infamous, even though they do have that late game play with the steroided up Troll Warlord, with yeah. the core silencer, with the bounty hunter in play, are looking to snowball and take a fast win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely not looking to take this too late. They also have Legion Commander, you know, infinite scaling OF Frog. Uh, so, okay, Kanishka, top lane, being stalked here by Baboka. He does have the Orb of Venom, but... I don't want to jump too deeply. Catches a glimpse of Mason as well. Shadow uh, walk to expire soon, so he'll make his way 
and down the hill as not to tip them off. Didn't place any wards though up here for the Radiant side. And we'll see how Sword gets off. Had a good, really good Batrider game uh, last game. So we'll see how he gets off uh, on his Magnus. Really not that much of a difficult lane. Uh, yeah, again, Monkey King will poke. As will CM once she gets a couple of levels, but uh, Spectre versus Mag in a vacuum. And we saw Anti Mage versus Magnus earlier, and Magnus just got his ass kicked. Spectre doesn't have nearly as much game versus the Magnus, uh, just because Magnus will always be able to skewer away. He will always have mana unless he makes some sort of big error. But uh, yeah, that lane should be a, a lane where Magnus is able to do just fine. We have ourselves Forev going up against the lane where you would expect Legion Commander to be kind of okay as well, but it's over towards mid lane where the action's going to start off really early. Abed is going to take a couple of shots here from the Silencer, cursed up as well. A couple of misses actually from Gucci, but still, this is going to be the game plan as far as dealing with the Lina. Sit the Bounty Hunter on her and really never let go, and if Boca can also mess with the CM, that could be huge. Although I don't really think I've seen anyone successfully mess with the CM yet. Yeah, and as Boboka rotates away after taking a couple tower hits, Abed easily uh, confident to sneak in the courier there for his south. So he should be okay in lane. I mean, Boboka will be a bit of a nuisance, but it remains to be seen whether they can find trades elsewhere with Bulba. And he's trading right now with Sword top lane. Does have the Jingu mastery, but uh, forced to use a couple of tangles already. With the poor man's shield on the Magnus, he's feeling fairly tanky up against the trade. It's going to be Sentry now. Dropped to clear out mid Abed. Does he have any more sentries on his allies, on anyone? No, it doesn't seem like it's the case, so making sure that the bounty hunter can do whatever he wants versus this Lena hasn't really done a whole lot just yet, but uh, Lane is still very young. CM walking around in the jungle untouched currently. They're trying to put the screws to Forev as much as possible. Forev going for a really defensive build, regeneration focused. Still going to take a fire blast, still going to take some chip damage, but... As far as killing off this Legion Commander, I'm not really sure if that's going to be in the cards for right now. So yeah. even with this Ogre Magi and the Bounty Hunter, I'm not really sure if any aggression is uh, going to be coming up in the near future. Yeah, I mean, the early point in press the attack certainly makes sense. Uh, we're back. Oh. oh, cliffed up his bulb. Oh, he's level 2. <laughs> yeah, not the easiest uh, hero to cliff. And actually, with the Jingu Mastery Charges, doing a lot of damage to Swords. Shrine is there, though. And Bulba will be forced to retreat. So, overall, pretty stagnant early game. Abed forced his last hit under the tower a little bit early, so he's suffering a bit in the CS department, but he would be just fine to recover. And with a couple levels in Lina, you can kind of manipulate the wave. Oh, uh, you say that. He's going to get hit with that Orb of Venom, and Gucci is kind of second-guessing whether or not he wants to go for that Lina, probably exactly for that reason. <laughs> Took a Dragon Slave to the face and a couple more right clicks from Abed, definitely would have been a kill on the Silencer. So he's got to play a little bit cautiously till he has a little bit more juice. Salve will even get cancelled. Dragon Slave cast range is fair and balanced. And Abed is still in a little bit of trouble here, but he's putting the screws to Gucci at range. This yeah. is why Lina is like one of, if not the best mid laners in the game right now, because she can do yeah. stuff like this. Even against yeah, two heroes, just throwing out the dragons and just destroying the Silencer's health pool and Baboka Juniors as well. And he's been really good not to tip off uh, the Bounty Hunter to the fact that there's a sentry here. He hasn't attacked him once at all when he's sitting there invisible. He's been throwing the Dragon Slaves directly at the Silencer so that he doesn't get his sentry dewarded. So that he can at least anticipate the movements in uh, from Baboka Jr. They will trade salves, uh, trade shrines, excuse me, both mid laners and get back to work so uh looks like the, the one glaring difference i guess of this early game forev has been effectively zoned out he goes for that early point in the press of the attack because it's difficult to trade against an ogre anyway so you want to be able to purge the slow from ignite and, and whirling axes um and it feels like sword has gotten a good amount done in this early game however that greed has kind of been mitigated um with with dubu farming in the jungle so he's level three where the magnus is as is bulba and maybe now finally the response in mid lane they could just use a boundless strike from range here on gucci abed walking forward gets cursed up now the boundless strike comes in from range very small stun they'll jump forward with the primal spring will not connect oh it does actually connect on the edge but the dragons have just barely whiffing now dubu under the tower will be the first to drop he's level three lsa connects though and dragon slave available he will kill off find the return kill on the bounty hunter curse goes out abed though should be okay to survive here has a tangle as well uh, magnus wander in and win the dvard battle 
over <laughs> in mid lane because uh, you know Bulba wasn't exactly sure what the Magnus was planning. Yeah, you never know when there's an Ogre Magi around the corner as well. So that's uh, gonna keep Boboka Jr. wandering around the mid lane with the uh, with the advantage. No detection right now on the dire side. Dubu will grab an Invis rune, so he'll be able to poke in towards that mid lane. But even though it is going to be first blood drawn in favor of the infamous side, it is still this mid lane scenario where Lina is dumping her entire mana pool into yeah. just harassment. Every single Dragon Slave, it seems, hits onto the Silencer, but doesn't hit onto an injured creep, so she's not getting any CS. 9-3 yeah. versus the 24 for 13. And that failed gank just made it even worse. Silencer getting the first stolen intelligence stack there. Mm. This Lina definitely needs some help or needs to uh, recalibrate her positioning so that she's actually CSing with the Dragon Slave as well as harassing yeah. Gucci. I mean, still, they're committing a lot here. Dubu now, Crystal Nova, and the Frostbite in the mid lane. LSA, or Dragon Slave, at least to follow Bound the Strike is there. LSA gonna be thrown and Wisp, but just another right click gonna connect. Full bot will be the return kill here, but seems worth it for Abed Ignite. Crystal Nova and LSA will be there to sound the retreat for Dubu. Makes it up the hill. One right click though from the Shadow Walk gets the Orb of Venom slow. He's still though able to make it back underneath the safety of the tower. Abed. Pressing forward, a couple of seconds till the Dragon Slave, not there in time. Either way, what I was going to say is that they're committing a lot to Abed in this early game to, to shutting him down. And if you look at the levels, because Bounty Hunter has been in lane so often, I mean, he's right neck and neck with Gucci. So he's not necessarily very far behind. And Mason is sitting on a Spectre, a hero that usually needs to be babysat. But all the meanwhile, because of all this rotation around, uh, he's been able to free farm the lane all by himself. He's only one wave of CS behind Benjaz, um, who, you know, likely had Ogre doing a pull for him at some point. So I'm guessing some of those are jungle CS. Uh, whereas Mason, um, you know, seven CS a minute roughly at this point and has a big wave under his tower. So not all is lost for DC. I think they're okay with how this early game's going. Yeah, maybe you just need to get Abed a little bit of extra cash, but for Ev. Having a, a pretty good time experience-wise, and Spectre, of course, having absolute free farm to match the Troll Warlord, but uh, it is going to be the lack of successful rotations from the Crystal Maiden and the Monkey King that is semi-concerning. Maybe not applying quite as much pressure onto Sword as they would really like. Speaking of, it's going to be another one. Smoke up towards mid, level 4 on both of these heroes. Gucci is not presenting himself right now, and even if he is to do so, YYF is in the area. He was spotted as the Ogre is going to wander through this Observer Ward range. So they know exactly what they're dealing with. Radiant know that something's up, but they're gonna scan the wrong direction. Haunt now, coming in with Mason and the, the supports. Silencer's gonna get completely swarmed with heroes right now, and they will very quickly lose their mid lane, even Forev going to show up in this engagement. Abed going to be chasing after YYF, will completely whiff the LSA. Now YYF has a chance to juke. I was thought he was gonna go for Roshan, but apparently he thinks he could survive. Not really sure if that's, okay, that was, that is not a juke that you can actually do up against four heroes, but uh, will be a two for nothing in favor of DC. Yeah. That is exactly how you want to use your first haunt. Yeah, double kill for Abed as well, so that gets him right back where he needs to be. He's now third overall on net worth, uh, 300 above the silencer. So you're looking at yourself and you're saying, we just spent the entire early game shutting that Lena down. She's now level six. She's pretty much at par, if not surpassing the silencer at this point, and all is well in the land of digital chaos. Uh, still, you have this Benjaz troll who's farming a lot. They actually killed off Forev before that fight, which is why he was able to TP in towards mid from base um, with a battle trance. But, um, you know, that that is an issue unaddressed so far. But DC recovered at least on their Lina here in the OG. I think the reason why Forev's having a much better time, even though he did go down, uh, Benjaz's build is, uh, is kind of just like a, a late game build. For this troll warlord prioritizing berserker's rage a lot not getting a lot in the whirling axes so as far as nuking down this legion commander not really what the troll warlord is looking to do right now just looking to get his passives up and eventually get that bloodlust up i guess another passive there another a passive from the empower and then look to power farm like we always got to remember that that is something that infamous are going to do extremely well in this game just get a super steroided up troll warlord and then just send him into the dc lineup by himself and having a uh, early game aggression that's successful is kind of just a, a side effect, kind of just a bonus for the yeah. infamous side. And so far... Well, drawing on the map. Yeah, he was drawing towards uh, Benjaz here, and he is low, and they do have the duel available. They need to find this troll and find him quickly. Primal Spring, fully channeled, goes out. 
Um, but there is, there is the miss there, and they now have Dubu rotating in with the Crystal Nova. Can they get in range? Not quickly enough with the phase boost there. And Benjaz will be able to make it out. In the meantime, Mason, he's still in lane top. They have an RP. They're looking at him, but looks like he'll back off in the nick of time. Ogre Magi rotating in versus the Spectre. An, an issue at level 1, but uh, when Ogre Magi is level 4 with not really that much in the way of his aggressive power, one Ignite, one Fire Blast, Spectre doesn't really have much to fear from the two of those heroes, unless she's going to get skewered into an enemy tower. And then, of course, it's not going to happen at that range. Rotations from Infamous. This uh, bounty hunter is level um, 5 at least. Is going to wander into no man's land, but luckily for him, there's no detection. He will get out of there and he'll be just fine. Although he's playing a very, very dangerous game, this bounty hunter. Once he gets level 6, then Infamous, their draft is going to start to take off. By that time, hopefully for the mag, he'll have his blink, but he's uh, pretty far away from it. Benjamin's going to opt for the Vlads again early on certainly allows you to kind of perpetually stay on the map, gives you a little bit of mana regen, allows you to farm reliably. So I bought lane for a, a little bit of trouble here. Press the attack, but it looks like it'll just delay the inevitable uh, as he is more than likely to drop here. He's going to go for the juke plays, gets the cuts into the tree. Boundless Strike is there on to two. Or have though the pathing is going to screw him over there and he gets brought down by the Fire Blast. Ben has with the range attack. What I was just going to say is uh, it made more sense to me the Vlad's last game because there was a Death Prophet and a Bristleback, two heroes that are innately kind of tanky. So you have to stay in these long, prolonged fights. I in this match, I felt I feel that maybe you go for a little bit more damage-oriented builds off the bat. Top lane, Skewer away from Sword keeps him safe. And Dubu, he's going to drop to the last word as Gucci finds himself minus two. Uh, or I guess plus two in his frame of reference. Either way, bottom lane. Ben Jazz brings down the tower in the meantime. And Dubu will have to go on him. They'll haunt up as well. They don't have... Oh, they do have the dagger. Now they'll press the attack onto the Spectre. Looking for the duel. They'll get it off, but the melee whirling axes are there. And they won't get the duel victory. He'll oh, leave the on the battle trend. <laughs> Get the kill on Fored, he will end up going down, and that's a streak to Bulba, but still gets himself the return kill. Nothing really else he could have done in that scenario. Vlad's first. Pretty good when you're just getting beaten down by right clicks, get that armor component, able to turn around for a little bit of extra lifesteal, which is not irrelevant in these uh, very corner case scenarios. So Vlad's right now, definitely an item that he is happy to have in his inventory. Able to get him that kill before he goes down. Uh, the bounty hunter now hitting that level six mark. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> either way, yeah, it certainly helps him out there. The early game value allowing him to get the kill. Boba under the cover in Invis rune, but he's not going to find anything just yet. Couple of wards expended here bottom lane to try and bring this tower down. But Ben has, I mean, he can kind of farm anywhere on the map at this point, so. I'm not sure that this tower means all that much aside from some gold. And in the meantime, Infamous, they'll take the tier 1 away from DC at about the same moment. The jump onto the silencer. He'll get a curse out, but with the Wukong's command, Circle of Doom down with Abed there. With the uh, Laguna Blade, if necessary, not uh, not a hard kill for DC. They'll take him down and, and maybe look for this tower. Although Benya is going to arrive, put a quick end to that. This core silencer... At least has this hand of Midas now, so we will have that going for him. But uh, your core silencer, if you're kind of getting picked off 24-7, just turns into a support silencer, and then you're even more so on this troll warlord plan. So the DC are handling this troll, this uh, the silencer rather, pretty well. But so far, you need to deal with Benyaz a little bit better because he's gonna have uh, some insane power levels soon enough. Okay, you don't want to be there, Bull, but trust me, Roshan deny? No, best he could have hoped for there. It's a Roshan that's pretty clean for Infamous, and they get a bonus Monkey King kill. DC, yeah. they do not have a haunt for another 10. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to take Benya's 10 seconds here. Yeah, with the Empower and the Bloodlust, I mean, this troll is just a force to be reckoned with. And maybe even uh, more of an argument for kind of the early game value build is that you do have those two steroid type of spells behind you from the uh, Ogre and the Magnus. Uh, so Benja has very difficult to bring down, uh, you know, initially as we saw bottom lane, and now going to have that extra life. We're going to look at this mid lane tier one. Abed, not nearby at the moment, really does want to finish off his uh, Bloodstone, and he is only about 500 gold away from that. Uh, so it looks like they may just try and wave clear and sack this tower. They do have the haunt uh, if they want to bring in Mason, but since Abed's not nearby, 
Doesn't look like they're posturing up for a fight just yet. Cliff is going to be popped. They are going to see Forev with the creep uh, make his way into the trees there. So they know there are multiple heroes from DC's side here. It's just a question of how many. Mason is still on bottom, still shoving it out. Sword's going to go deal with him. That means that if shit is going to hit the fan over in the mid lane, then Infamous will be out their most relevant damage dealing tool. Or, uh, control tool, rather, in that RP. Wow, that damage on the Troll Warlord just by random spam. It's gonna bring him super low, and they're unable to catch up to Mason as well. So Infamous, they make a pretty aggressive play with this Troll Warlord and Aegis. Doesn't really cost them a lot, except for a lot of time. They're still doing uh, pretty well in the net worth department. I think soon enough we're gonna see the, the impacts of Empower on Benyaz. You can already see him, like, clearing an entire creep wave in just, like, three hits. It, it is yeah. pretty silly at what the Troll Warlord can do. If he's gonna get this far ahead, but uh, DC so far have yet to take like a, a real big fight. We've seen one duel. We've seen I think zero Laguna blades and only one haunt. I or two haunts. So uh, DC definitely trying to avoid fights as best they can. But at a certain point, it's going to tip over. And I think that point is right now where Forev is going to be spotted by everyone and their mom. Jump forward, skewer back into a fire blast. Look at Benya's go. That uh, Wilming odds hit pretty hard, but not nearly hard enough. That's gonna be a free kill. Maybe even looking to position themselves bottom for a couple lane, more, because yeah. bottom lane, Abed, being stalked by Boca Jr., knows about it. He's going to turn around with the Laguna Blade, has a Dragon Slave. RP is going to be used to buy a little bit of time, but not quite enough. Now Bubble's going to jump in with the Wukong's Command. That'll quickly do in the Magnus. Here comes the Silencer, drops a couple of nukes onto Abed. That'll do quite a bit of damage, but I think he should be fine here. And he will. Raindrop, pretty good. Mm -hmm. As Infamous, they whiff their RP, they kind of waste their Bounty yeah. Hunter. So far, no track kills. I mean, a little unfortunate with the RP as Boba, he lands just after the stun hit, so he didn't wasn't part of that RP and gets the Boundless Strike off. Else, they probably killed Alina. Uh, either way, it was a bit of a curious usage of the ultimate and uh, ends up not panning out uh, for Infamous there. This game, a lot more even, uh, perhaps, than game one. DC uh, looking good after a, a rough start, and they do have Relic Gold on Mason here, so he's going to get a lot stronger very soon as he uh, finds enough to pick up this Radiance recipe. Miss Chance up against the Silencer and Troll, both mm -hmm. at a super premium, and looking at these other kind of side supporty heroes for Infamous, Silencer included in that, both very e uh, all really easy to bring down. Like Troll, uh, the Ogre Magi, his tankiness is still kind of there, but uh, for the most part, that's not really his forte when a Spectre with a Radiance haunts in on him. Bounty Hunter, Silencer, all, including the Magnus, vulnerable to that. Especially this Magnus with the Blink Dagger. Lag? Hello? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of lag. Okay. Uh, looks like everyone's lagging. It just feels like with a Bounty Hunter and a single core lineup, essentially, you know, maybe call it a 1.5 core since you have a Magnus with your, your troll. Uh, it just feels like at 20 minutes in, you want a bigger lead than they've been able to accumulate. For infamous so i think you know dc have stymied the bleeding from the early game and they should be fine the, the one hero who's really lacking his essentials is forever's legion um he's a little bit lower i mean even bulba surpassing him in the way of network but he's 250 gold away from a blink dagger so that's a big pickup if you can find it meanwhile haunt um, it's out mid lane and they will be able to catch out gucci they they uh Get him to pop the global as well. He will find the return kill though. He immediately up to the high ground is Mason. He looks for the TP out. LSA will catch Ben has, and they won't be able to kill him off though. There's an Aegis in his hand. So Abed oh, looking to back up, but skewered right into his paws. And Ben has will finish off the Lena. Mason making it out of the fight, but they get a silencer and a global for their Lena and Monkey King. He did also grab the Aegis, but it doesn't feel like that's going to deter Infamous from pressing forward for this tier to jump in from Sword, gets the Shockwave off onto the track, Lina, to be a little bit of extra gold uh, going the way of the Radiant Squad, and now they're going to look to potentially pressure in this tier to mid. Ben Benjaz, though, even though having the Aegis, not very healthy. Now jump forward for the duel. Forev's going to get skewered away. They're at least not going to get the damage. And oh, now RP. jump forward. RP is going to hit on a few. Empower popped up onto Benjaz with the Battle Hunger. They'll get Abed or at least force out the Bloodstone Suicide. That'll heal up Forev so they won't continue forward. Uh, but that is... That feels bad, man, right after purchasing the, uh, the Bloodstone there for Abed. What an absolute mess of an engagement. Off to the south, it was the uh, Bounty Hunter and the Silencer, I believe, both trying to uh, chase down for a couple of kills. But that duel immediately responded to with that skewer. 
from the Magnus, and then the RP, it's just backbreaking. And for Benyez, uh, he, I think he was down uh, down one of the steroids, maybe not Bloodlust, or maybe just like tail end of the Empowered. He will do enough damage to kill off the Lina and the Legion in the future, make no mistake. So uh, that fight from DC, really a little bit too spread out for their liking. Like you d really do want to get that one off with the Lina, and then try to just like uh, make that numerical advantage into a victory thanks to that haunt, but uh, it's with that spread out nature of the fight with Abed kind of getting pin pinned down in the really early stages, you aren't able to make that happen. And for Infamous, their troll, he didn't end up using the Aegis, but was able to run around pretty much the entire time freely. They will get a duel off onto the Ogre. Will it be a win? Not even a win. Forev still at zero. Yeah, at least they get a kill. <laughs> Definitely feels like you know something it's a it's an expendable loss for for infamous i mean they're farming elsewhere and jazz is looking um, you know only a couple hundred gold away from his bkb and how do you kill him off at that point so a couple of heroes tracked up top lane bound the strike and the uh, dragon slave going to connect onto the boca they're going to spare no expense for that bounty hunter, almost like he was the real Baboka there, and they should be able to transition this into a tower as well. Sword able to blink out from under Bulba's vision, and he's actually setting up here four seconds though until his blink dagger uh, cools down because he had to use it defensively there, so can't look to make the initiation. Radiance is up though on Mason, so they can at least maybe if they pop that off early, cancel the uh, blink of the Magnus. Uh, in the next engagement, but Ben Benjaz does have that BKB, so not going to be affected by the burn uh, for that duration. This is uh, definitely a rough game to be a bounty hunter. He is getting a little bit of gold towards his mechanism, but so far I've only had a handful of track kills. It just seems like he's never been where the kills have been happening. Like every single kill that happens, the Boca Jr. is a little bit too far off, or it got picked off beforehand or something along those lines. So. Bounty Hunter kind of working with the budget. We do have a pretty big item pickup on the Silencer and the Rod of Atos. Uh, just being able to get a little bit of extra bulk up for him, and I'm sure he's going to keep prioritizing survivability over all else for Staff, his next build. Uh, Silencer's starting to get to a relevant damage stage, but still, with this leader now picking up the plus 50 damage talent, it doesn't seem like Silencer really has much competition in that department. Oh, the scan from the ratings is going to reveal a specter is she on the high ground i'm not really sure where she is she is on the high ground actually and with the haunt she's going to try to get away but actually everyone's here so there is no haunting out of this one and uh, that kind of sucks to be mason in there but uh, either way it is going to be a kill for infamous but uh it is going to require them to use rp and global silence they thought backup was coming but it wasn't yeah they, they spare no expense i mean it's the highest worth target on the map um so Probably worth both both of those ultimates, but fortunately they don't get anything more uh, than just the Mason kill there, and they do end up, uh, as a result, losing their tier one mid lane. Still though, looking for the Blink Skewer, perhaps is Sora. They get the Rod of Atos off. Uh, Shadow Blade is there. Do they have any detection for Abed? It looks like the answer is no at this moment. Press the attack. Charge off that last word, but now Ben Joss, he's going to join the fray. Pops up his BKB four of in a lot of trouble here. Gets the uh, positive Solar Crest Shine buff, but it won't be enough. Keep ben Jazz from killing him off, and Abed's going to be dropped as well on the east side. As again, that Rod of Atos proving, you know, very effective here for Infamous. As maybe, and you know, without the RP to be used, they lack a little bit of disable. But that root uh, able to lock down the Lena, and they get two big core kills uh, after bringing down Mason bot lane. There was a lot of talk about this item once it was uh, first changed to work like this. The projectile that just nets you down. It is maybe because not many heroes just want to get it because it's just not in their build. There are better items, like Lena just has so many better items to get. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is still a very effective item if you're able to land it at all. You're able to set up so much. Like that, uh, the, the setup didn't work, but using the Rod of Atos into the Skewer, and what the hell are you supposed to do about that if you're DC? Just have a Yule Scepter, have a BKB to kind of avoid that? But at that point, you're just using a BKB to... Dodge a freaking Rod of Atos, that's not worth it. So this is going to open up so many more opportunities for the infamous side. And we're going to see uh, this Troll Warlord really start to take off. He had a Shadow Blade in his quick buy. Looks like he's still going to be going for that item. But uh, with that BK with the SNY, if he's on top of you, you're not really going to escape. Boca Jr. Hit with the Dust, will return a track towards Bulba, but should be fine. He has the mechanism now complete on the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. 
So he'll have the Grieve soon if he can, you know, maybe purge a dust or something along those lines. Uh, could allow him to survive, get some more tracks off, continue to beef up Benjas. Still worry, I worry a little bit that Infamous isn't as far as how they want to be. And essentially going to be dropped here. Very timely manner and up to the high ground goes Dubu. He's able to pop the smoke, at least on the bounty hunter. Trap. This could be a bait and they get the duel off and Ben has immediately and saves the BKB for that one. Now to the high ground goes Bulbuck and they do. They have a skewer ready here. He's tracked up. Not sure if he's aware that he's tracked, that he's going to be skewered back into the hands of Benjaz again. And uh, Bulba, double kill for the Troll Warlord. Meanwhile, they found Dubu as well. So three free clear, uh, free and clear kills. Abed immediately to the mid lane alongside Mason to try and shove it in uh, to make sure that there are no objectives taken off the back of those kills. But conveniently enough, those spawning. So Benjaz is going to make quick work. Jeez this world. That is disgusting. Troll Warlord is uh, definitely a hero with some anger issues there and uh, that smoke play from Infamous just coincidentally popped the smoke just before any vision came up on the DC side so they thought they were okay. They saw a bounty hunter wander around and a bounty hunter wandering around is pretty normal. You don't really think twice about that so you can't really blame him for taking the bait like that but Wandering into literally the entirety of the infamous side, Global Silence securing the uh, numerical advantage, ensuring that there won't be any Spectre arriving into that fight, and man, did that Legion Commander die quickly. It, in fact, gave dual damage over to Baboka Jr. That's, I guess, DPS Battle Fury Bounty Hunter on the way, but uh, it's still forever with zero dual damage one. Maybe, maybe when he gets this Blade Mail, He'll be able to do something up against Benyez, but that's still a risk. Like, Benyez is going to kill him so quickly, and oh, it's up to the top lane, actually, where Abed being stalked. He's tracked now, and he's kind of being cornered. This better be a TP. It is a TP, but not the right kind. It's Boots of Travel, and the Curry is actually going to get sniped on his way out. Abed got to run, but no running from the Skewer. He's tracked up, and he's going to kill himself out of necessity. Bloodstone just bleeding out charges right now. Yeah, Infamous looking very legit here in this uh, American qualifier. I mean, the last couple of days I've seen them, you know, beat Thunder, Awaken, and Old School, and Elite Wolves, but didn't quite think they were on DC's level. Looks like a bit of the, uh, maybe the jitters with the new roster here from DC, but definitely still, you know, not out of reach this game for them. Um, the, the state that Forev is in, though, still looking to build into his Blade Mail. It does kind of feel like a single core versus single core uh, match, and Mason... I'm not sure if he can quite put in the work that Benjaz can uh, at this point. 7k net worth above uh, this Spectre. How has the Silver Edge completed? So Benjaz, a Supreme Assassin, if he wanders into pretty much everyone, anyone, they're just straight dead. And speaking of straight dead, 4 Ev, oh, quick fingers! Blinks away from the axes. Mm -hmm. That's some uh, Ehan timing right there for 4 Ev. And he's, there is still a couple of targets in the area. Bulba going to teleport in that is not spotted by anyone from Infamous, but they are still looking to use this Troll Warlord as the battering ram. And, uh, well, we saw how fast he was able to take down Roche. I don't think this tower is going to fare much better. <laughs> yeah, Empower Bloodlust, pretty good with your Troll. And he'll make quick work of that. And they may just continue to take these low-hanging fruits, but for now, they'll put the Shine onto Benjaz. He'll pop the Battle Trance and try and force a reaction out of DC. He'll even go into melee range, this Tier 3, not long for this world. That'll open up Shrines. He'll even start throwing some damage into this... Uh, Range racks. He still has our melee racks. He still has Aegis. Press the attack force out. Dubu with a shuriken almost dropping here. Benjaz still has not yet used his BKB and absolutely for free. He'll take a melee uh, racks here in the mid lane without reaction. Shrines now vulnerable as well. They'll make a B line down to the south. Pick out the East Shrine here. And Benjaz still yet to use the Aegis. He's still got almost a full two minutes on that. I mean, we said multiple times, Troll Warlord with Empower and Bloodlust is ridiculous. I don't think we said it quite <laughs> enough, though, because, I mean, those those structures are not supposed to die like that. There is no minus armor here for Infamous. That is just pure right-click damage, pure and simple from the Troll Warlord. Abed, on a hunting mission for the Silencer, throws a Laguna Blade with that bulk. Not dead just yet, but will fall. Mason is going to haunt in. I don't think he has any other plans for that haunt, so it is going to be... A haunt for a kill, a pretty nice one to have, 650 gold, killing off the enemy silencer is no small feat, 
but in this stage in the game when they're looking down the barrel of 14, 15k deficit, Silencer being down is going to get them a tower because there's no global silence, but Infamous, they are still looking like they want to make a play here. Bulba is not on a tree. Benyez looking to go in, and Sword is as well. Is going to find a couple heroes. RP not in time. Gets dueled and shredded. Finally, Frev claims some dual damage. And Infamous, they have to reconsolidate their heroes. I think they have to back up into their base and just let these objectives fall. Yeah, still only a level 2 duel, so kind of inconsequential that he gets the 14 damage there, but they'll get the objective, more importantly, here in the top lane and get the big kill on the Silencer. Uh, so full Manta up for Mason. He's got 2k gold in addition to that. We've got the Solar Crest behind him uh, on Bulba. So no answer to that in this game just yet for Benjaz. I mean, he can disregard the Radiance mischance a little bit with the BKB, but uh, no MKB in sight for him. He's going to build up Scotty uh, and looking to just tank up for now. Um, you know, trying to just become the raid boss. He's got so much behind him that you know he doesn't necessarily need to burst these heroes down as long as he stays alive uh, and kills them off one by one. So, ultimate arm in the inventory and not all that far off the full Scotty. 2500 HP is quite a lot to burn through if you're DC. Laguna Blade is level 3 at this stage. And that will do quite a nice chunk onto Benyaz, but you gotta remember that there's still a mech on the Bounty Hunter. He even picked himself up a pipe. Oh, he got like 4 or 5 track kills in as many minutes, and now Harry Potter is gonna be spotted by Booker Jr. Gets tracked up. Monkey King does not want to be here. Shockwave coming in with the long range spam. He will get a little bit of help from the Legion Commander, but still will fall. Now looking for the Crystal Maiden. Rod of Ato's value right there, and will lock down another kill kills. for the team. Two track kills. And then there's just so much extra bulk here on this Troll Warlord, just more than meets the eye thanks to this Bounty Hunter. So many buffs on this Troll Warlord in general now, like defensive and offensive, and man, DC couldn't do jack up against Benyaz as a full five-man team. I don't know what they're going to do now, missing two heroes, including that Wukong's command. Yeah. Benyaz is pissed at this tower, he's going to take it down, he's pissed at the racks, he's going to take that one down as well. Troll Warlord just be raging, man. They're going to jump in, try to duel, that's not going to happen! Oh my god, bad move for Ev. The RP is only going to land onto a couple of illusions. No, it's actually going to be stop cancelled, and it will eventually land onto the Spectre. She's going to get a couple of mischances, but it's not nearly enough. Ben yet, still very healthy, as Dubu's going to show up. We'll kill off the Ogre Magi, and they may kill off the Magnus as well. He's going to stop moving. He knows he's screwed. <laughs> but you know what? The base of DC is looking really bad, and Ben Yez, with the Fresh Eye of Scotty, is looking really good. Yeah, just very difficult to kill off and almost has some mercy there in the top lane. Felt like he could have continued forward, but respecting the the possibility that this Lina uh, and Spectre have buyback and, you know, they got the melee racks, they have the full lane in mid. Not the greatest team at dealing with, uh, with Mega Creeps, even with the Radiance and Lina. Um, they're just going to have this constantly shoved in. Uh, to their side of the map so infamous feeling good let's let's take our win to, with all the gold we get from the structures uh, get our next round of items and then look to go high ground so benjaz continuing with the kind of tanky raid boss theme he has enough damage with the bloodlust and the empower he's just gonna go for the satanic here uh, to finish try and finish this game off pretty nice item to have when you're going up against blade mail it's one of the biggest threats that he's facing up against dc although it didn't really seem like it given that uh very suicidal play from Forev. Blink in for a pseudo stun onto Benyez. Did very, very little for him. Benyez now silver edging forward and is going to be met by the vast majority of the DC team with vision at the ready. Although Abed is in front right now. This is Benyez. Got to play very cautiously. His backup is so far. There's no global silence just yet. Got to wait at least that 25 seconds. For that to be up before they go for this tier two yeah i mean that was a, a a call that was made from dc they were ready for it but the the bkb reaction from the jazz was just beautiful on the initiation so abed couldn't really contribute uh, when he jumped in with the blade mail uh ha haunt now comes out though bkb immediately popped by bench as they <laughs> get, the, get the skewer back onto the specter they will rp her up and control her but nothing else found by this troll warlord just yet however Mason completely isolated out to the south, and DC no response in sight. Freezing Field gonna get stopped by the global, and the Rod of Atos is there to hold the CM in place as well. Abed, the last man standing, or I guess woman in this case, um, the Lena for the DC, and we'll be able to make it away with the Fiery Soul Stack and the Shadow Blade, but 
Um, not like Infamous are really all that concerned with that. Laguna Blade comes out mid lane from Abed, trying to kill off the Ogre. He smokes off the last few right clicks. And YYF has survived. Spam pinged out from Gucci in uh, South American fashion. And GG is called. Not sure how many of you betters would have assumed that Infamous 2 ODC here, but I mean, they take their recent success in North and South America and they actually apply it to you know, what a lot of us would consider a pretty tough opponent here for them uh, in DC. And DC going to drop down to the lower bracket. They're going to face the likes of CC and C, the Awar, Snaking, and the rest of Is GG. And the loser of that is out of the Summit 7 America qualifier. So no easy road now for DC going ahead. Infamous, they'll move on to face Thunderbirds. And when I said earlier, like, Bounty Hunter gets the dual win, Battle Fury, Bounty Hunter incoming, I was kidding. But him with that extra damage and the battle trance from Benyez, he just <laughs> right-click destroyed that Lina. Like, that just, in no universe in any pro game is that supposed to happen. But uh, it did seem like there was a little bit of a lack of response for this Troll Warlord coming out from the DC side. Uh yeah. It really just was the thing that was consistent for the uh, for the Radiant. Like, Benyez was just never really stopped. Infamous had a couple of heroes have a couple of rough times. Bounty Hunter got to a really slow start. Silencer got jumped a couple of times. But no one was dealing with Benyez. And, man, Troll Warlord walked in, took free racks. Not much you could do if you uh, lose racks for free and you're as five. And then you lose a couple of extra heroes. He's so difficult to deal with at that stage but dc as you said are not out just yet expect a, a little bit of a period where they're going to be struggling with their new group of uh, group of players hopefully it's not going to take them too long because yeah. <laughs> their date with is gg is very soon but either way we are done for today guys three best of threes in a row a lot of breaks but uh yeah we're gonna call it quits summit seven america qualifiers gonna continue i think there's some uh, some tomorrow actually yeah so be sure to keep your eye on the beyond the summit channel follow the channel i'm not really sure why i'm telling you that because you should be followed already but you should also follow us on twitter i'm mike loris you can follow me on twitter at mike loris and you can follow my co-caster at mrp dota it's all in the title any final words before we shut this down uh 28 dual damage on the Enemy squad, 14 dual damage on DC. Rough times. Uh, but either way, thanks for joining.